Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery, Space Command, Star Trek writer Mark Zickery, Smurf writer Mark Zickery, etc., etc., etc. You can go on IMDb or whatever and look up what I've done with my time. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about Bright, which is a very interesting uh, new movie and a very interesting new model. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Um, uh, you know, Will Smith, of course, is a big movie star. In fact, there was a feature of mine that we'd been in conversation to do together called Fugitive Space. We'll see where that leads. But, um, but he's a wonderful actor and a wonderful star. And of course, I've loved him in movies like Independence Day and I, Robot and uh, I Am Legend, which was based on Richard Matheson's um, uh, I Am Legend, <laughs> which if, let's see, I have a first edition of that somewhere back here, but uh, not, not at hand, not at hand. So, um, because uh, Matheson was a writer for Twilight Zone, and I wrote the Twilight Zone Companion, as many of you know. So, um, but let's just dive into Bright, because first of all, in days gone by, Bright would have been a big, big um, studio feature released at Christmas. It would have uh, been in th over a thousand theaters, uh, a thousand screens at least, maybe two thousand screens nationwide. It would have cost two hundred million dollars to make, uh, would have been a big rollout. And instead, because now Netflix is spending $8 billion a year on programming, that's billion with a B, uh, they are reaching out to movie stars like um, Brad Pitt and Will Smith to do what would normally be big uh, features to be released on Netflix. So Bright came out at Christmas, uh, and the budget is uh, reputed, estimated to be $90 million, which is, which is half of what it would be if it was a studio rollout, not including promotion. And uh, and it also saw, it's, and, and, and in a way it's a throwback, because there used to be a lot of movies that were like cop buddy features. It was a staple of, of movies. And you got, of course, Lethal Weapon is the, is the most famous one. But you have things like Alien Nation, which my friend Rock Neil Bannon created. Uh, he wrote that and uh, was spun off as, it started as a feature then be, with James Caan and Mandy Patinkin, and then it became a, a TV series. And then there's movies like Training Day and End of Watch, which is directed by David Ayer, who uh, also directed Suicide Squad and directed this movie, Bright. Uh, so in a way, it's a strange throwback uh, with the two cops, where one of them is um, more friendly, or, and, and the other one's a little more um, tr tr troubled, and um, and often there's a racial split, or it's dealing with racial tensions, or whatever. You know, there's always something that's a, that's a wedge between these two guys, and then they end up um, deep friends. So. So in terms of structurally what it's doing and genre-wise what it's doing, there's nothing particularly new or fresh here. It's a very entertaining film, and it's very interesting because on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, critics give it 51%, and the fans, the audience, gave it 90%. So clearly it's an audience-pleasing movie, even if the critics didn't um, warm to it. So, um, uh, and, uh, and interestingly enough, um, and, and as you can see behind me, I wrote a trilogy of novels based on a TV pilot that I wrote. I wrote the TV pilot with Elaine. It was based on an idea I came up with. And then I wrote it as a trilogy of novels for HarperCollins with my co-writers, Barbara Hambly, Maya Bonhoff, and um, Robert Charles Wilson. And now we're taking it back and we're pitching it as a series. It's also audio books. It's also an audio play starring my friend Christina Moses and Armin Shimmerman of Deep Space Nine. And uh, you can go online. You can go on Amazon and, and sample all of these things are audible. And, uh, and we'll, we'll get into the differences between Bright and Magic Time because they are, <coughs> there are many similarities and many differences. And um, it's kind of fun to get into it because this is a world I've gone deep, deep, deep into over a number of years. So, but let's talk about Bright first. And... Um, it's a fantasy mashup with modern day. Basically, the notion is it's almost like Lord of the Rings really happened, and now we're in the 21st century, and it's our world, but there's orcs, there's elves, there's fairies, there's magic, etc. And that's, that's a very fun notion, of course. Uh, Joel Edgerton plays the orc partner of cop Will Smith, and Joel Edgerton you may know from movies like Loving and The Great Gatsby done a ton of stuff. Uh, I believe he's an Australian actor, a very talented man. In this, I felt he was having a little bit of difficulty because, you know, who are the orcs? What is their backstory? It didn't seem very fleshed out. And, and in a way, uh, the orcs were sort of just like gangbangers, more or less, and the, uh, um, the elves were kind of like upscale jet set snobs with the one percenters. Okay, it's okay. And, uh, and fairies were just like, you know, guys you hit with a broom, little guys who are bothersome and, you know, trying to go at your bird feeder. Um, all well and good. Magic wand, going to bring back the Dark Dark Lord, who's essentially Sauron. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a mashup of Tolkien and modern day. And, but the cool part is it is a fun action film. There's a lot of fun action set pieces. A little too much guys are pursuing us with machine guns, and that happens again and again and again. There's car crashes. Again, it's nothing is reinventing the wheel. 
but it's 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 entertaining. It's, I, I I find it much more entertaining than Suicide Squad, which I didn't particularly like, other than than Harley Quinn, who of course was was really fun. Uh, but um, but you know I thought that that uh, Will Smith was not as well used in Suicide Squad as he is here. He does a very good job here. And again, it's playing with you know he's a you know there's bigotry against the orcs, and are are we going to like the orcs? Are we going to accept the orcs? In a way, it's similar to what he did in I Robot. A movie I very much like, uh, in which it's like he's a cop and he's against robots, and Willie warm to this robot who ends up helping him and saving the day. So it's pretty much the same arc. Um, I am I am Legend, by the way. I should mention there are two different versions of the most recent, the Will Smith version of um, I Am Legend. I strongly urge you to go out and get the DVD or Blu-ray and watch the original version, the director's cut. It's much better. It follows Matheson's novel or the intent of the novel much more closely. Um, it explains certain things like you know, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler. Uh, it's why why Will Smith kills his dog, and then in the version that was released theatrically, he discovers a cure. Why didn't he just keep his dog for a few weeks, and he could have cured his dog? In the original version, he doesn't find a cure, and so his dog doesn't die needlessly. And um, I much prefer the original version, and and I think you you may well too. Um, Independence Day, I, I love. Some people hate it because the computer virus that can defeat aliens. Yeah, that's a stretch, but it's still a great movie with with Will Smith as the black guy who, for the first time, doesn't die in a science fiction movie. And and the other character is a Jewish guy. Leads a black guy and a Jewish guy. Great, and uh, you know, a wonderful ensemble. So, um, but back to Bright. So, so uh, it's it's entertaining. The uh, you know sometimes I feel like 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 Joel Edgerton is having trouble finding who his character is, what his character's about. He's kind of bumbling. He's kind of a little lost, a little you know uh, you know just kind of a little uh, diffident and not not sure of himself. It's okay. The makeup is okay too. Not great. Uh, it's it's just you know, it's I mean terrific monster makeups are beautiful to look at. If you if you study Frankenstein's monster, the Karloff one, it's spectacular. Or or a uh, creature from the Black Lagoon, or any of the great makeups, Phantom of the Opera, the uh, Lon Chaney one, they're beautiful and repulsive. And whereas whereas the orc makeup here is just kind of like okay, it's okay. Uh, but Numi Rapace plays the villain. She's an elf uh, who's in pursuing a magic wand, and. Uh, it's um, you know, Numi Rapace is a very interesting actress because uh, she first came to prominence in the original version of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and uh, then she was in Prometheus. And I think, I think if she plays a character with, who has an edge, uh, she's really good. She's great in Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, and she's really good in this, playing an evil elf. When she doesn't have an edge, she just kind of isn't very interesting. And so in Prometheus, she's just kind of odd and boring and weak and. Uh, you know, kind of. That's a very flawed movie, of course. It, it qualifies as one of the movies that I love. If you turn the sound off, if you just watch it, the visual design is spectacular, and uh, it can be very entertaining just to watch as wallpaper. Or if you like art design, which I do, I love science fiction art design. But um, but uh, you know, it's a very pro problematical film, and she's problematical in it. But here, she's a very good villain. The elves, the choreography, the fight choreography with the elves is very very good, and. Um, it's entertaining. She's she's good. She's memorable. She's distinctive. And Will Smith is very good in this film too. Um, beyond that, it's written by M Max Landis, who wrote American Ultra, he, and he wrote Chronicle, lots of other features. He's then he also uh, um, executive produced was the creator and showrunner, showrunner, and um, wrote a lot of episodes of the recent version of Dirk Gently's Holistic uh, Detective Agency, which is based on a novel uh, by the writer of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, so. So there's a lot of um, of good um, uh, lineage here, and and Max Landis is the son of John Landis, who um, uh, was a very was a big A-list director, did a lot of major films, American Werewolf in in London, uh, Blues Brothers, etc. But then he was a director on the Twilight Zone movie. There was a, a helicopter accident that killed Vic Morrow and two children, and that basically put a pall on his career. Uh, he didn't go to jail. There was a trial, but. Um, but it it basically really uh, was a roadblock to his career. Now his son is having a very good career in features, and uh, so. But but let's talk about the comparisons between Bright and Magic Time because I came up with this first <laughs> long ago. Uh, I had the idea for a TV show where all the machines in the world stop running and magic comes back, and certain people. Uh, most people stay the same. They stay as human. They don't have powers. Some people get magical powers, and some people turn into the creatures, the archetypal mythical creatures they are by their nature. So we have three basic kinds of creatures. We have uh, what I call flares, which are like um, uh, f uh, fairies, and they're these kind of creatures. Uh, and then there's uh, uh, what are called grunters, 
guys that, live, that run in packs and hang out in the darkness, kind of like Morlocks, and then finally dragons. And uh, they're, they're, those are the rarest of all. But um, uh, so, and I had a big uh, epic story that started in New York, traveled across the continental United States down to uh, West Virginia, then Chicago, then uh, finally ended up in South Dakota uh, in the three novels. There's a fourth novel I'll eventually write called Paradise Road that ends up on the West Coast. But now I'm pitching the show again. We, it started as a two-hour pilot that Elaine and I wrote, spec pilot. It was optioned eight times by Henson and Davis Entertainment, among others. Uh, then I sold it as novels. Then I sold it as unabridged audiobooks. Then we did the audio play of the pilot, uh, again, which you can check out on Audible. And um, uh, now we're pitching it as a series again. It's under consideration at a number of places. And uh, I'm going to expand it to, uh, be, to show what's happening in the world, in Europe and in Asia, as well as America, when I do the series. And I may ultimately, once I don't get finished with Space Command uh, or have Space Command well on the road, I may just do a crowdfunding campaign and raise the money to shoot Magic Time. Uh, now that I have such a great relationship with my audience, now that I can raise money directly from my audience, uh, I think I will do that, uh, because uh, why not, <laughs> frankly? Uh, but. Um, but it was very interesting having delved into um, into flares and grunters and dragons as I did in Magic Time to see sort of an iteration of that in Bright, and uh, I thought Bright was clever and uh, visually interesting and and entertaining. It could easily spin off into a TV series or into more features. But again, with Netflix, it's hard to know how a how a movie does. Is, is it doing well? How are they judging that? Is it getting a lot of viewers? Is it bringing more subscribers to Netflix? They they'll they'll do all of those uh, calculations, and that will determine what happens to that project. But you know, I have I have grave concerns about movie stars doing Netflix movies because, you know, uh, even though movie stars are now doing television widely and TV series, there's still something about a big movie star and a big movie release. And um and and somehow when you release a movie uh, like Brad Pitt has done on Netflix, like Will Smith is now doing on, on Netflix, it's there and it's gone. It's not a movie. It's not an event in the same way. And they had billboards uh, promoting Bright all, of, all over LA, I assume all across the country. And, and I'm sure they rolled this out all on the same day around the world, which means that a ton, you know, a ton of people, millions and millions of people will see it. But um, if I were a movie star, I'd be very concerned about doing this often because that may take some of the um, sheen off being a movie star. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but but it's very possible, additionally, this may have been a movie that they were trying to get made elsewhere, and the studios were saying, well, $200 million, it's fantasy, there isn't a great uh, track record of modern-day fantasy succeeding, particularly this kind of fantasy. There's Lord of the Rings, but certainly The Hobbit was less than it might have been, uh, whereas Lord of the Rings, of course, was terrific. Uh, you know, who knows? It, but they may have just come to Netflix because Netflix just writes a check. And, uh, and that may be more and more why movie stars do turn to, uh, to Netflix to make their features. But, but Netflix, of course, uh, you know, if they were going to be a, going a more traditional route, they would release theatrically first and then a few months later show it on Netflix. Uh, but that's not what they're doing. And uh, so, and I'm, and probably Bright will be will show up on home video eventually, maybe Blu-ray, DVD, all that stuff with extras. Who knows? But um, but meantime, for those of you who don't subscribe to Netflix, you know, I don't know if there's another way to see it. Uh, perhaps it's having a limited theatrical release, but that wasn't the case here in Los Angeles at all. Um, but meantime, uh, you know, it's it's fun to watch. It's entertaining. If you have nothing to do on New Year's Day and want to see something that's just kind of fun, Joel Edger Edgerton's character is rather charming. Ultimately, uh, you you know, you do you like him. Ultimately, um, there's twists and turns that are fun. Um, you know, it's not going to be um, something to change the world, <laughs> but um, but it's a good job and. Um, and, I, and anything that keeps Will Smith's career going, you know, if, if we end up doing a Fugitive Space together, that'd be great fun. We'll see where that lands. But more, and again, more and more, I'm just tending to just say, well, I'll just raise the money and shoot stuff. Uh, so we're, you know, again, once we're well on the way with Space Command, I'll, I'll set up the campaigns for Magic Time and Fugitive Space, and off we'll go. So, um, but, the, but the great part about all of this, and one thing I should mention, is that at least with Netflix, with Amazon, with Apple now stepping up, in terms of doing TV series with crowdfunding, with all, and I'm writing a book now called Greenlighting Yourself, which uh, Silman James, my publisher on Twilight Zone Companion, the new Twilight Zone Companion is coming out shortly. Uh, 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 Silman James will be releasing Greenlighting Yourself in the next year, or so I have to write it. But um, but with all these different models, I think filmmakers and showrunners have great opportunities now to get their work made in ways that were not possible uh, years ago. When I started in television. As I've said before, there were three networks. That meant that most 
writers, great ideas for shows, never saw the light of day. And also, again, the definition of what makes a show or what makes a movie is much broader than it used to be. Uh, it used to be, for instance, during the era of Gunsmoke, if you had gone and pitched a show where you said, well, I have an idea about this guy, this uh, chemistry teacher who gets cancer and he becomes a drug dealer, they would have, you know, kicked you to the curb. They would have called security. Uh, but now you have room for shows like that and you have room for shows like, you know, Star Trek Discovery, The Orville, uh, name, name Your Poison, whatever you like, you can find. And it's impossible for everyone to watch everything. Uh, I just watched Handmaid's Tale on a flight back from London and I'll be doing another Mr. Sci-Fi commentary about that very shortly. But um, I think it's terrific that people can find what serves them, what suits them. Now, one thing I should say for all of us watching TV shows and movies, make sure you also have a life, by the way. Turn off the TV, uh, you know, step out of the theater, you know, go and meet people, speak up, you know, build a life, have kids, if, you, if that's your bent. Uh, make friends, you know, don't just watch more and more stuff. And, uh, or, or play video games or just lose yourself in your iPhone or iPad. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, here I am doing my web webisodes, but, uh, but it's very important to, to, uh, to be with people who love you and who care about you. We, I, I recently did my Mr. Sci-Fi commentary about cruelty, and I think it's very important to be mindful about the life we're creating and the world we're creating. And uh, uh, TV shows and movies can inform us. Books, of course, can inform us. But again, we have to say, well, what am I doing? What am I actually um, creating? And that's where being an artist, being a writer, producer, director, I can look back on a body of work that I'm very proud of. But, um, but meantime, I also, you know, run a round table. I mentor people. I, you know, we just had our big party for the table. Hundreds of people came. And so uh, it's nice to have such supportive and wonderful friends. And uh, so that's sort of about it now for Bright. Uh, um, if you want to comment on this or comment on anything else or subscribe to the Mr. Sci-Fi channel, I comment about all things science fiction, TV shows, books, movies, and my own interesting <laughs> career in all three. But, uh, but that's it for now. And so we'll talk to you very soon. It's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, Mark Zikri of Space Command. We'll talk to you again and, uh, and definitely have a great 2018. Bye-bye.